So in today's video, it's going to be a bit of a different one than what I would normally would post. So today, we're not going to be ranking anything. We're not going to be telling stories or whatnot. We're not going to be going on adventures. But today, I'm going to sh be showing you my favorite apps that I have on my phone. The best apps that I use on a daily basis for general productivity. The apps that I think are the best for each of their categories that they use. And it's just going to be a helpful one because I feel like a lot of self-improvement YouTubers, the general ones I watch, like Andrew Tain Hamza, they don't really talk about the apps they use on their personal phones. I would just find that, like, annoying because, like, I want to be the best. I want to find the correct apps for my situations. And I want to know what the professionals are using. What are they using that I'm not? Do they have some special little app that allows them to just be so much more productive than everybody else? In that video, I'm going to dispel what I, the apps that I use, my favorite ones. And I'm not going to waste your time, so let's hop right into this video. <laughs> so the first one we're going to be ranking today is Notion. Notion is one of my favorite apps for general productivity, for generally the best notes app that I've found. I know I use Apple Notes sometimes, but this is the best for keeping just little notes you have, little things. Like, I have stuff right here. I have YouTube scripts that I write. I write my, I sometimes I'll script out YouTube videos if they get a little complicated. And this is what I use. I know I have like videos for my talking head videos. I have, I did some medium posts, you know, like blogs. I tried getting into that and writing my own blogs. I have stuff for podcasting. I take notes on books sometimes. So anyways, yeah, that's why I use Notion for. It's really good for... If you're somebody who has a lot of notes, a lot of complicated notes, and Apple Notes isn't really helping doing it for you, it, you can have a lot of subcategories and a lot of like things that flip up. It's really good for that stuff. Okay, so next one on the list, guys, is Habit Tea. Habit Tea is the best app that I've found for habit tracking. I just like it. I like the, its simplicity. You know, a lot of habit tracker apps are super complicated. They use, like, calendars and buddy systems and a bunch of paid stuff. This is completely free. Everything in here is completely free. You go to settings, and there's, like, nothing there. Super simplistic. And if you want to tally it, you just go here, and you click it, and it'll keep your habits for you. And, yeah, there's, like, a little calendar, little thing or whatever. I don't really use that. I haven't really used this habit tracker app. I used to use it back in the day, but I'm kind of over the point of habit trackers I should prob I should probably start keeping my habits more but I find it annoying the way that I used to use them because I I used to like put a ton of habits like how I have it on my phone a bunch of just do a bunch of habits and then it like kind of loses its value because you have to like check every little habit every time you do it and it kind of gets tedious so I think what I would learn personally from my experience is just don't have so many like let's say make bed you want to make your habit you can set a reminder and you want to say you want your reminder to say something like make it bed i don't know <laughs> make your bed repeat it every day remind me blah 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 i'm not going to say that but you get the gist of it it's a really good habit app overall my favorite and let's lead right into number three my third favorite habit is dream kit down your dreams and like if you want to become a lucid dreamer you want that do that lucid dreaming protocol or whatever you want to start remembering your dreams which i know a lot of people a lot of the friends i've talked to are interested in doing that and they haven't really gone into it but this is the best app for it if you want to dream journal it's super more efficient it's way more efficient than using a fucking notebook we're, we're past the age of using notebooks we have technology we have our phones so what i do what i used to do if i wanted to remember my dreams was I wake up first thing in the morning and voice type my dream out because you can talk way faster than you can write your dream out. I just voice type, go on a fucking rant and talk about my dream. It allows you to put a bunch of little things in it, a lot of stats, and you can like remember your dream. It's like a dream journal, like I said. Let me read this dream. I'm, are you guys interested in hearing one of my dreams? This one's super weird. Okay. Anyways, back to it. Excellent, excellent app in general for best app ever that I've come across for dreaming, dream journaling. So highly recommend it for anybody trying to get into that kind of stuff. But moving on, 
to the next one. This one is for you language learners out there. If you want to learn a language, it, you know, I know a lot of people who want to learn Spanish, like my mom. This is the best app for language learning. It's called LinkQ. It's developed by this guy called Steve Kaufman, who is like an expert poly language learner. <laughs> He's learned like probably at this point 30 some languages. Very talented guy. And he developed this app because for himself, for learning languages, and it's d based off like the most efficient method. You know, the way we learn languages is you think for speak. It's a, uh, you know, when you want to develop your vocabulary in English, what do you do? You like read. Reading is super important for developing your vocabulary. And it is basically what this does. So if we go into a story, like a mini story, say I'm learning Spanish, but you can do this for any language. There's every language is on this app. And you're just reading. You're saying, Andrea, una mujer que se está. So I don't know this word. Vis yendo. I'm guessing si. <laughs> so if you don't know the word, you can just click on it. Oh, vistiendo, wearing, and it'll just tell you the word, and then you can, like, over time, clicking enough words, you'll, like, memorize them all, and, like, you'll build up your vocabulary, and you'll be able to, like, kind of, you'll be able to understand the language. It's a very neat app. I know, like, I know a lot of people, when they think language learning, I want to learn the language, the first thing they go to is Duolingo. My problem with Duolingo is that it sucks, it's fucking horrible, <laughs> it's super slow, it takes forever to, like, fill in the blanks, they do this shit like fill in the blanks for this word that's missing and stuff like that. And it's super tedious. It's it's a game. It's a game, basically. It gamifies language learning. So in that regard, it's fun to do, but super slow. It's going to eat up your time. This here, this reading, it's pure efficiency. It's, a, it's um, simplistic. Next one on the list is kind of iffy. But as a content creator, as somebody who produces a shitload of content, Every day, I'm always recording, always recording challenges, talking head videos. Right now, I'm recording this in between a challenge. I'm doing my run a mile every hour for 12 hours, and I just have a little break. I have two more miles to go, and decided to record this. I record a ton of content, and the best apps for recording are your camera app and your photos app. Other apps, though, I have like, you know those things where I have like the camera thing? Like this, this. I don't know. Is it st still screen recording? Like, it allows me to have a window in my thing. Is this screen recording still? Let me take a screenshot real quick. So going into the next one. What's the next one on our list? Yeah, this is my favorite app on this list so far. This is super underrated. No one's gonna find. No one is ever gonna teach you this app. There's no. There's no tutorials for this app online. I'm the only person where you can find this app. But it's my fucking favorite <laughs> you know when you want to listen to something people are going to like speechify is the most popular thing for that you want to listen to like an audiobook you want to have your thing voice aloud read some text everyone's going to go to speechify but there's some like better alternatives because speechify you have to pay a shitload honestly it's like something in the maybe like a hundred dollars for like something it's like a super long trial. This is a one-time purchase of like $9. <sighs> so, what I do... I know this is going to sound cheaty, and I'm probably... I'm a bad person for doing this, but I will read the PDFs of books. I won't... I will not go out and buy a book if if I don't have to. I will just read the PDFs. I know that's kind of shitty, but like... So right here, I have a bunch of books that I read. Okay, so... For all of you aspiring YouTubers, this is one of my favorite apps as well, is the YouTube Studio app. So, what this allows you to do, you get to go on your phone and just, it allows you to post content on here from the thing directly. And you can manage, you can just look at stats, look at how your videos are performing, pretty mid, look at analytics. And a good, very good part of this is you get to respond to comments on it. Like, if you're, like, busy or something, you're just, like, waiting in line or something, you have nothing better to do. What I like to do sometimes is just respond to comments, go through these. Simple. Okay, next one, going into my favorite editing software to have on your phone is CapCut. I will, I will edit videos on this. It's good if I, like, have some simplistic thing I just need to do. 
if I need to like just chop up some videos or whatnot, if I like, if I just need to like edit a clip or something, that's good. Yeah, it allows you to do a lot more. You know, it's basically an editing software. It's probably the most advanced editing software on you can get on your phone. It has a bunch of these things. You can add text. Just, yeah, I could make a tutorial for this. But I'm not going to go into too much detail. It's an app. It allows to do, basically, it allows you to do everything that you could on the PC version. So when it comes to to-do lists, there's a ton of options you have. Of course, there's a to-do list. There's so many to-do list apps. Let me go on the app store real quick. Lies of amounts of like apps for to-do lists. To-do list this, to-do list that, blah, blah, blah. And I love to-do list for that. Um, you can like, if you have something, you can just cross stuff out like this. And like that, yeah, just cross that stuff out. And it's really simple to like make a thing on to-do list. You just go up and you get to write blah, blah, blah. And done. You got your fucking thing. And you wanna, you're want you done with that thing, you just cross it out. Bam. Is Medium. Medium is basically Twitter for like blog posts. If you have a blog, I'm, I'm new to using Medium, but I've tried, I've made it my job to like kind of, whenever I have a bit of free time, I'll try to write like a blog post. And I've I'm got kind of getting good at it. You guys should check it out. About overthinking. <laughs> I wrote a blog about going outside. And it's just cool. Because like I said, it's like a time capsule. You're you're gonna have you're gonna be able to look back on these blogs and look at just what you've done, what you've written, and just how you were back in the day, what you, you thought back in the day. Medium, super good app. Hope you guys enjoyed this video.